Welcome back everyone to Clash Royale League Asia. We're back again after the first series. Dick over the game with in a very dominating fashion. We saw them drop a game in 2v2. It seemed like more of an error uh, rather than their true representation of their skills. So a very strong team already recognized uh, for the Japan reason coming with game with. Again, look at two more teams here as we do get onto the second series with Fob Gaming and Detonation Gaming. Again, first look at Fob Gaming on the left side of the map. Again, look at Rad. Kensumeshi, Oz, and Yakitori to kind of round up the lineup. Yeah, for everyone games. here has 6,000 plus trophies. Oh this is goodness. an incredibly strong 1v1 kind of team. It really is, and we saw Shun earlier it has been kind of showing us what it means to be a top 1v1 player over there in Japan. Can I get an example of that here, uh, where we do see Fob Gaming with very high average trophies all around. We're going to look at Detonation Gaming as well. Look at Lewis, Ku, Pierre Meki, and Masumoto coming from this team here. You can see a, obviously a lesser uh, average trophy count for this specific team here. Yeah, Lewis is kind of bringing down the average with just over 4,800. But I've seen in the past with the Clash Royale Crown Championship Global Series Korea, that's so much of a mouthful. <laughs> but we saw last time where Expo Master didn't, had 3,800 or 4,100. Oh won the whole thing so trophies are an indication of how good you are at grinding 1v1 right. but it doesn't show your pure skill at 1v1 it doesn't show your versatility as well because the kind of the reasons that most of these pro players uh, hit a rather lower uh, trophy count it's due to experimenting with multiple cards multiple decks and a lot of varieties that you can just kind of trial and error to make sure you know exactly how to use each utility in just goes to show you that some of the lower trophy players that we have in this tournament turns out to be the better players because of their versatility. Yeah, they're really creative at low levels. So, I mean, I guess the guy is just playing over and over again with these quirky kind of decks yeah. and just keeps dropping his trophy count. But the first game we're going to see Rad versus Koo. Um, we don't know much about these players right now. We're going to find out soon enough because we did get a first signing of Sean and we're very, very impressed uh, with the very youngster who really liked to uh, show the heavy cards and how they pulled it out was quite impressive in itself. Yeah, Sean's performance makes me optimistic for the rest of today. Like, if Rad and Ku have even half the same skill as he does, right. we're going to be watching some entertaining games. And I think they're going to have the same level of skill. These are all professional Clash Royale players in Japan. And at least for Fob Gaming, we're going to get at least an average of 6.2-ish gaming. Just huge high-level potential for what they can show in the 1v1. Is Obviously, we're going to get the first signings of that. We're going to be selecting the band cards to see what irritates them the most. To see what they want to see away uh, from the games ahead. You can see that this band card that both of these players will select will not be able to appear uh, for the maximum of three games ahead, which will kind of show what composition they want to create here. Yeah, so I'm just taking a look. Favorite card, Ku really likes the Golem apparently, but they can choose any card they want in this list. So Golem is Ku's favorite card. And for Rad, Mirror. Oh, Mirror card, you say? He, he said he likes the Mirror, but he might be lying. I've seen Bomb Tower on these favorite card lists, <laughs> and I mean... I mean, Bomb Tower can be great, so I believe. Believe in the Bomb Tower. Ooh, Golem ban here from Brad. Okay. Miner from Detonation. Okay, now I, I can see the Golem card coming play, where it's a very commonly played card, especially with the Elixir Collector, if you can pull that off well. We've seen it done many, many times, but the Miner is a bit of a surprise for me. He doesn't like taking chip damage, obviously. doesn't like the distraction that can come in an instant when somebody uh, is rushing from behind you. So uh, kind of an interesting choice of bans there for both teams here. Yeah, to me, Miner ban kind of makes me feel like who is going to play these big, heavy push decks and doesn't want that chip damage annoying him and slowing down his pushes from sure. behind. Banning the Golem means that... Rad is probably going to play very aggressive decks. He doesn't want to be stuck defending this big heavy body. Right. And it also could be. Maybe he likes the Lava Hound over the Golem that he wants to make that kind of push as well. It's a little bit different characteristically the way you push a Golem compared to the way you can push a Lava Hound. Has been shown uh, strategically various when it comes to you know past sightings of those two different cards. But banning out the Golem, we're going to see a little bit of different uh, strategy 
compared to the conventional ones we've seen so far? Yeah, if you have Gollum in your deck, what would you replace him with? I, I'm going to assume Giant would Giant probably be the closest. Giant is something that we see a lot, especially with the push that can be the same mechanism, pushing with the Prince and the Dark Prince, the Double Prince push, we used to call it. You can do that with the Golem, but you can do it just as effectively with the Giant. Obviously, with much less Elixir used, the Giant is not going to last as long as a Golem, but the theory does go the same way. Still, Rad, keeping with the Mirror Card, as you did mention earlier, whether that is a trick for us to believe or see that in real play, we're going to find out in this first game here. Yeah, and there's Ku's favorite card, Golem. Good ban there by Rad, I guess, uh, taking out his opponent's favorite card. This is why maybe you would say Mirror is your favorite <laughs> card, just to try and bait the ban. Maybe someone will be someone will ban Bomb Tower, and you're like, well, that's a bit of a wasted ban, isn't it? Oh, come on, you're never wasting a ban. Even with the Bomb Tower, a ban is never wasted, and Bomb Towers can be great. Make Bomb Tower great again, Simon. I could try, but I don't know if I'd be able to do it. Like, uh, it's, it's quite a difficult thing to do. It's not a bad card by any means, but I don't think at tournament level, yeah. it's a great defensive card. I think Tombstone is a lot better for cheaper. Sure, and it's a, you're using just three elixirs to take the aggro away. Most of the the, mid, uh, the tower attacking uh, units we famously know being the golem. You can see... Uh, Forming up the decks here for both of these teams and Detonation along with Bob Gaming. Get to see the first signings of these guys, at least one of these players. Uh, they begin the game one very shortly here with about 15 seconds in. Yeah, it seems like bans here have kind of wrecked both players' decks because they seem to still be making the most of these three minutes. Usually we see 30 seconds left, they're just having a bit of a laugh and a joke. But these guys seem to be completely focused on making these decks. Even to the last second there we saw, they were still making changes to these decks. I think they're about to be ready soon. The timer has run out and we'll, we'll get to see the first sighting of Fob Gaming and Detonation Gaming to see which team does come out stronger. We saw Fob Gaming with almost a 6.2k average trophies uh, for every player on that team. So any player you stand out, it won't be a, won't be a shame to pull out as well. Yeah, I mean, these players, these are the top of, of Japan. I went to say Korea then. But these are the top players in Japan. And we're about to jump in to game number one, I think. It looks like it. they're having a bit of a discussion with the staff, but we're almost ready to go in. We will get a notification if a timeout has been called, but most likely we will get straight on to uh, the first game between these two teams. First signings once again, kind of being remarked to a point where kind of our expectations are high after seeing the first series between a game with Ampono Sports with Sean and the rest of the team. Coming from that left side with Game With, shown us very impressive strats to go forward with and raise our overall expectations for the entire region of Japan. So, you know, it really goes to show you that these two teams uh, really have high expectations for, uh, for them as well. Yeah, I don't think they call a timeout before we start. It looks like there might be a few issues with uh, technical stuff. Yeah. But calling a timeout right at the beginning of a, <coughs> a set or even the match. This is before the match even starts. Calling yeah. the timeout this early would be strange, but I could see it if these changes completely do destroy every deck they had ready. There you go. I think we're very much ready to get onto the first game. Rad versus Ku coming from Fav Gaming and Detonation Gaming, respectively, on the blue side for Rad. And Ku is going to be on the red side on the top of the map here. Yeah, passing out that good luck, and then not even a good luck in return. We see the tombstone being played. The disrespect there coming without the reply there. The bandit is going to be wiped away by the minions. Going be zapped away just to make sure the tower will be able to finish it off. So no damage coming through from either side. That bandit almost just decided to go straight for the tower and then was like, oh, there's a tombstone over here. I better check it out. There you go. Quite easily distracted. Lava Hound summoned preemptively. Summon in the very forward of things. Oh, but the battering ram connects and the dark prince. This is oh, going to deal so much damage. Oh my goodness. I don't know if that lava hound was the way to go. He invested so much elixir into the front of the line. The reason why you usually have that in the back of the line, back behind the king's tower, is so you can gather more elixir to make sure you have the supporting units to go with it. But you're just literally sending a Lava Hound blind in the front of the line without any type of support. And the Infernal Dragon takes care of it. So much of an elixir trade already. But with the Dark Prince ready to go, just puts down the damage onto the first tower. And you get a goodbye for Ku on the first tower here. 
Yeah, that Battering Ram did so much damage. Like, Battering Ram, Dark Prince. Yeah. It's, if that hits the tower, the tower is going to oh. die. We're gonna see it now going on to the King's Tower. The, the minions are focused on the towers here. Just gonna go forward with all the damage, but the Barbarians are still putting a lot of damage, but there's not much defense being put out. And for the Slava Hounds, Infernal, tower, uh, Infernal Dragon is gonna get the Mega Minion first. It's gonna target uh, the Lava Hound next. Yeah, Red seems to get a little bit greedy there, trying to hit the Battering Ram and Dark Prince again onto the Crown Tower. But can you blame him? His tower was super healthy. It was worth the risk. And again, he didn't defend it and just managed to stop that battering ram in time. If that battering ram hit, yeah. we'd be looking at that tower in the 1,500 range. There you go. But still knocks it down to half health here. Bandit connects onto that tower as well. That is dangerous for oh, Ku. Oh, but look at this minion. You have to settle for this before you start moving. Q keeps playing that Lava Hound right at the front. I mean, I know he wants to get it on the tower almost instantly, but look at the defensive position it puts him in. He has no defense here. He's trying to get the Lava Hound to make sure the damage comes through, but nothing really significant. Oh, there's, that tower is now super low. He needs to defend this, with like his life depends on it. He has 18 seconds to keep everything off that tower. Oh, Summons goodness. a Frost Golem, which is really important. At keeping oh, the damage off. 10 seconds left. Does he have one more fireball in his rotation? It's going to be the biggest question. He has to get into an overtime before anything happens. The fireball There's does the fireball, come through, But so is it going to matter? The Inferno Dragon oh, is going to hit that tower. Oh, and a and the as well. So that's going to be finishing it also. Didn't think about the aftermath. You did send the fireball with the barely the four elixirs you got, but no other backup plan coming right after that. So. Woo, showed a lot of action on both sides. This was a fiery one, definitely between this 1v1. We thought it would be a little more meticulous, just talking about the inches and calculations of running through the defense over time. But these guys, just all about the attacks on one side and investing it all here. Yeah, that was very all in from both players. And it, it definitely favored Rad's strategy, the Dark Knight, the Dark Prince, and the Battering Ram deals so much damage quicker than a Larva Golem. Uh, Lava Hound can. And the Lava Hound was easily counted for it. All he needed was the Infernal Dragon. That's already a plus three elixir trade just from the interaction. When you, you know, Infernal Dragon obviously doesn't die out from that trade. You just end up killing up the Lava Hound relatively easily. So I, there's a reason why people don't summon the Lava Hound in the front of the line. You just have to summon it from the King's Mount. Take it easy. Take it patiently. Build up the elixirs to make sure you can get the supporting units right behind it. Those are where the real damage comes. So it's not really from the Lava Hound. It seems like mostly the tanking opportunities for that. But really, an interesting call uh, coming from that Detonation Gaming. But we're going to see a timeout from Detonation Gaming is what we've been hearing. So very interesting call after a very hectic game, Simon. Yeah, Detonation Gaming kind of did need to use that timeout. Ku, whilst not making mistakes, seemed to do things a little bit differently than what we were expecting. Yeah. Uh, Lava Hound being at the front, for example. That's not a mistake, it's just a problem. Yeah. Um, I could see the fireball had to go out at the very end, right? Sure. You had no choice but to throw it out. But throwing it out just opened up that last tower for, for Rad to come in and just finish it off. And you gotta think about the King's Tower was half healthed as well, so not many options when you have taken so much damage throughout. So even if you are even on the tower count, it really doesn't matter. Just barely getting the overtime. Once well, obviously the initial strategy, but you have no backup plan after that. I think a timeout was needed as players cannot be changed here. It has to stick with the same players. So whatever you decided to go with this 1v1 between these two teams with Fob Gaming and Detonation Gaming, you have to stick with these players and just try to strategize around them to make the best results you can. Yeah, Ku needs to to take that time out and think about what happened that game. Like, was it my mistakes? Was it the fact that I didn't defend that well? Like, he had very offensive cards and didn't seem to have much in the defense. Right. And that really hurt his play. He had nothing to survive. And he couldn't get that quick kill because the Lava Hound was in front. Even at the situation where the Lava Hound was trying to be the offensive strat, you saw that from the Japanese cast. They're very nice though. We're gonna try that when we get on the camera next time. But <laughs> <laughs> coming in, uh, Rad definitely had a tougher time. We see him from earlier, but Ku, he really wanted to get something done there, but the Lava Hound on the front line wasn't the answer. 
Yeah, and there's a knight at the back for Rad. Bats from Q, so he's seen different decks from both players. This is the kind of style I like to see. I think this is really important to change your decks every game in tournament format. You can see the, just the knight tanking it up from all the strikes coming in from the dark prince here. Goblin gangs and he split well. up into two lanes. Good luck. Logger's going to slow it down for a bit, but one rush ought to come through, and that will be the initial strike. The Elixir Collector coming in here. Now for Rad. Yeah, I got really confused, and I was like, oh my god, he's been banned, but it hasn't. The Elixir Collector is still active, yeah. which means, what are we going to see that's super heavy? Three Musketeers, I'm going to guess. Okay, we could, and uh, everything is on the line here. The Golem being the only banned card. Lava Hound is available. Three Musketeers, as you mentioned, Simon, is available as well, so... A lot of different big cards are going to be the intention are coming from both teams. <laughs> two Elixir Collectors being summoned here, so a little bit of truce call between the two players already. Yeah, you take it easy on me, I'll take it easy on your Elixir Collectors. And we haven't seen any big spells that can take them out instantly. Massive. Yes, that log's going to help, but it's not enough, right? And we see the P.E.K.K.A. being the choice coming in from Ku. Feels like that's the way he wants to go There's with. Battering Ram again, and this time it connects onto that tower. So much oh. damage so quickly. The Goblin Gang there too. Oh, look at the way that the P.E.K.K.A. summon allowed Rad to just go in and spend all his mini cards that really came to success. He didn't have the Dark Prince in time. Now the three Musketeers just trying to compensate for all the Right, that can come from Pekka, not even a single strike before it goes down. So a very nice strike back defensively coming from Rad here. Yeah, Ku did exactly what happened in the last game, but instead of the Lava Hound, this time he had a Pekka. Yeah. He plays the Pekka down, Rad goes, all right, you're going to do that. My Battering Ram is going to hit your tower with so much behind it and just take it out instantly. And we can see that Ku seems to be not choking oh. under this pressure, but his other tower has gone down so quickly. The pressure is on Ku here. Uh, just summoning the P.E.K.K.A. once again. He has four elixirs to work with. How is he going to summon? Battle against his Battle Ram and the Goblin Gang coming in here. The Zap is going to be the only answer now. Them still putting a lot of damage onto the King's Tower here. Just focusing everything on that P.E.K.K.A. If this rush does not work out, I do not see Ku winning out this one. Yeah, Ku kind of oh, didn't no. worry about the defense because he knows that he has this attack. And three, oh. two, one. Oh, it was so close. But I, Red takes game number two. Really good play there from him. I have to say that was absolute domination coming from Rad from Fob Gaming, which I have to remind you is at a 6.2k average. I keep saying it over and over again. That just goes to show you the importance of 1v1 for this team. Fob Gaming has been emphasizing 1v1. And we can already see that from the trophy count. And here they are, a very dominating performance, ending the game in 2-0. Yeah, there was this much of a gap for that push to work with the battering ram and the golems oh. behind uh, the goblins behind it. And he waited and waited for the right opportunity to just go in and yeah. strike. As soon as he saw that Pekka, it's like, all right, Woo! he's on that side. I'll go on the other side. See you later, tower. Seven elixirs gone is the go button for you to summon all out with the battle ram and the goblin gang. Relatively cheap in the way you can make that into a success. Even cheaper altogether compared uh, to actually a P.E.K.K.A. coming through. So really nice coming in. Uh, that 1v1 is shown in a dominance. But I have to say that Bob Gaming did well in the 1v1, but at the same time, Destination Gaming showed a little bit of a little bit of empty areas they could improve heavily upon. Yeah, Ku, after this, should sit down and watch just quite what went wrong. He sure. opened himself a little bit too much at the wrong times. Yeah. Dropping that P.E.K.K.A. down. He put it down on one side, sure, it's perfect play, but Pekka is a very, very slow card. And you've already seen, I think you already saw the Battering Ram, right? Yeah. So he already saw the Battering Ram, knowing that's a quick push. Already saw the Goblin Gang. He knew his opponent had such a quick counterattack. He should have been a lot more careful with his timing on that Pekka. I mean, first time the error could come through, and you saw the Pekka, whenever you do summon it, you see the Battering Ram, and you see the... Goblin Gang, you can't counter until you get that fourth elixir to summon your Dark Prince to at least try to counter that. But when you got the mistake the first time, he did it again the second time, just summoning the P.E.K.K.A. preemptively before any other cards uh, from the other side came through. So 
a little bit of carelessness, I do have to say, in all honesty. So, this young player, I'm sure he's feeling a little bit of pressure. You know, coming to this professional match, he will not maybe play like that in a regular match that he would be feeling a lot more comfortable in. So, I mean, like I said, Simon, it's, it's a lot of time to just look back at your plays and kind of reflect over what went wrong and make it, big, make it better for next time. You do have one more week uh, of kind of regionals that we can go through here. Yeah, and it's still super early in this pennant race. It has to be said, like, Ku had potential to show what he was worth, but he lost to the counter-attack every time. Yeah. It was a counter every time. So we know that Ku is weak to that. So maybe this week he's going to spend practicing, making sure I don't lose to these counter-attacks, making sure that I know the window where I'm weakest and not be weak during that window. But now we're in the 2v2, and we see the bands up on the screen. We have Lava Hound and Miner. No, no tornado this no time. No tornadoes from either team. This might be the situation where they were thinking the same thing you were thinking. Maybe the other team will ban out the tornado. I don't need to ban out the tornado. But they were wrong, both of them. And we're going to see a tornado into play. Obviously, the two players, I mean, talking about four players now in this 2v2, they're going to be definitely utilizing the tornado. Yeah, I'm gonna. I reckon we're gonna see tornado. We're gonna see executioner because executioner tornado oh, is the perfect. classic combination. Um, there's so much we could see actually. Like tornado itself is such a strong defensive tool that if they go for like giant skeleton, we saw a lot of giant skeleton yesterday actually. If that comes out again in this tornado is a good counter if you can time it correctly, making sure that it doesn't hit the tower in that death bomb, which deals. Almost a thousand damage at tournament level is away from your tower. Really is. And let's look at the favorite cards for um, the players we'll be seeing today. Golem being the favorite of Ken Sumeshi. Kind of shows why they banned the Lava Hound. Just limiting the Lava Hound so they can use the Golem and really not have anything other big cards to worry about. Oz's favorite card being the Miner, which was banned. I'm guessing you don't want to ban Golem in 2v2 because no. you, you want to use it yourself. I really do, and you're, the winning strategy does mostly come from the Golem in 2v2. We thought the Tornado would be the must ban for either of these teams, but could be a lot of mind games involved in the way that none of these teams decided to go with the Tornado this time around. But what we can expect here is that Tornado, we talked about Tornado execution combo, but I've seen Tornado uh, rocket combos as well, just bring everybody in, rocket the heck out of everybody, and just blow them to pieces. I've seen that happen as well. Elixir Collector. On the other side with Detonation Gaming, Lewis, that's his favorite card going forward. So heavy cards is probably going to be my suggestion into what Lewis is going to be bringing forward here. Yeah, Lewis is 1,300 trophies below everyone else in this wow. game. Wow. Um, Lewis, it's, that's not a low total, right? 4,803. I that's would still to get there. I would, <laughs> I, would, I would, you know, do anything in my powers to get myself to 4,800. That will be the dream for me. But that is a number out of my reach, Simon. That is 6,000 right there. Yeah, my arms are not long enough to reach <laughs> that from where I am. I'm a big guy. That's really far away from where both of us are. Oh, God. Um, it does, as we said, trophy count doesn't matter yep. that much. It's just an indication of how how much they play. And how centric their 1v1s are kind of shows us why 5 Gaming was so dominant in, in the way they kind of relished uh, upon the victories they did get in the set first set here with the 1v1. But now we are in 2v2, completely different game where individual performance obviously is important, but I felt like the more important factor in winning these types of games was really the communication, the teamwork, and the trust uh, between the two players. It's going to be the one that really just clinches you out to victory here. Yeah, it could also be the reason why Lewis's count is at 4,800 is because the only thing he has done for the last six months is play 2v2. You never know. You never know. Um, taking someone who plays a lot of 2v2 in this, I think is a really good strategy. If I was one of the team coaches, I'd be looking at someone who plays a lot of 2v2. This is the, the clutch match, right? You need to win this regardless. If you're one up, you need to win to take the match. If you're one down, you need to take it to win, to go into the ace match. This is the most important game. This is like the lever of winning this match. And we know that 2v2, although it counts for the same amount of match points altogether, does give you the same amount of points as if winning a 1v1. But it is important to kind of consider that we'll have this for the rest of the tournament for months and months and months to come. So I'm kind of remembering back to Southeast Asia was my first cast uh, of the tournament. We saw Brent Esports, who in their interview said 
Their specialty is 2v2 because they have spent so much, so many hours just practicing on 2v2. And that really came through as they did not lose. They did not drop a single game from 2v2 from all the opponents they faced that day. So really kind of shows you the importance and the emphasize where you can just press forward with the strength being the 2v2. You never know. That might be the destination gaming spirit, uh, the secret that it has been uh, yet to unfold yet. Yeah, take out, take a 2v2 professional into your team. Sure. Train up the other 1v1ers, and suddenly you've got this strong match, this strong set right in the middle where you're going to be able to turn the tide of a match or you're going to be able to finish it out. It's going to be very suitable for the event format that we have been performing here in this Clash Royale League Asia where it's no, no longer just about the 1v1s. It is going to be about the 2v2 that we're going to be seeing here with you guys. Can look at Fob Gaming versus Detonation Gaming sending out the good lucks once again. And once again, a no reply. No, no, both teams replied this time. Okay. Everyone was replying All to right. each other. There's the Royal Ghost and a Mega Minion taking out this Dark Prince. I feel like the Royal Ghost is a very good uh, counter versus Dark Prince just for the fact that it does go invisible and can tank quite a bit before it does go down. So Yeah, it also deals area of effect damage, so any Goblin Gang or anything like that will be taken out almost instantly. The Flying Machine there got Fireball. They do not want to see that card in this match. So a little bit of surprise. Another Flying Machine here. So how do they take care of this one now? Prince is going to be summoned here. Settle for now. Prince. It's a jousting tournament in the middle. Who's going to take the victory? Oh! He's going to receive the support from the Princess Tower. Now he's going to have to receive his own support from his own end. Yeah, there's a there's a golem there for FA, uh, for Fav Gaming. Some of the on both sides, actually. Destination Gaming summons their own version of the golem. Yeah, both these golems are going to walk past each other, just ignoring the existence of the other. You know, they they should be friends, right? But they just, oh, I don't want to see you. I mean, they're they're, they're colored a little bit. Too, so they're on a different team. So being the same golems, they're fighting for a different team. So they have to be loyal. So they're moving forward here. The seems Pekka like defense seems to be doing a lot better job than the Night Witch and the Inferno Dragon defense. Oh, OK, can he get one tower, though? Really important here. The golem now broken into two, still yet to be taken and care that of. Pekka is still coming and he's still Whoa. so, so healthy. We don't have to imagine how much HP this Pekka has at the moment. Okay, he's gonna get the Pekka before the Prince is being knocked away. How can they compensate for this Prince now? The guard being summoned. A single target damage from the Prince is gonna be inferior uh, to the guards here. Yeah, Mega Minion and one Elite without his shield. They're not gonna do too much damage to a tower, but one hit. Every little helps at this point. But there's the Royal Ghost again, and it's gonna it's gonna hit this tower. Oh, maybe not. It's going for the Dark Prince here, now trying to act its counter. Obviously, with the help of the Prince's Tower, that does help quite a bit. Now, Golem's working on both sides here. I wonder who's gonna get more of the damage. The Prince is there to do a little bit of pushing. See, the Night Witch's damage is so unstated. Like, those bats. When there's two of them, it's not much. When there's four of them, it is so much damage. Yeah. And we'll take out the Golem so, so quickly. There's a Tornado. Uh, so Tornado being shown for the very first time. Does immaculate uh, amount of effort this there. Pekka is so Pekka. Oh, he was yeah. so close. But this is a strong push now for Fab oh, Gaming coming into this tower. Oh, look at this here. This is going to be a lot of push. Double Dark Princess just to get this defense out of there. Mega Minion is going to be helping out. Knock out the baby dragon. It over is time. a very strong defense, though. Double Prince with the shields. It is so much soaking of damage. With the Prince going to the front now, it's going to connect with the Golem, dealing a decent amount of damage, I guess. Yeah, the, but the Prince will go down very, very soon for the opposing Prince that came through ladder in the series. But Pekka being summoned again to compensate for the Golem in front. Prince is going to be summoned Inferno again. Dragon. And the Poison again. Poison is such a hard counter to the Night Witch because the Poison will instantly uh, take out any bats. Look at this left side, they're just a log to slow them down. I don't see them stopping the P.E.K.K.A here. It's going to be very important to see oh, how they do. What a good turnaround okay. again. Right at the Ooh. last minute, Royal Ghost and the Prince. And this Prince is going to go, oh, I thought he was going to get to okay. the tower. This is back and forth. Who is going to take? Oh, but this is looking a lot desperate, though. Something that Mega Man just to stop being. That was a very smart defense. It worked out. Flying machine there. Stop getting the minion. Relatively easy here. There's another golem, and the flying machine is going to take out that mega minion. Uh, just the tower should be able to finish this up. But there's another golem and another dark prince for 
Detonation Gaming? Yeah, there yeah. you go. We're gonna see the Night Witch being attempted again. Obviously, the poison is still available to make that hard counter onto all the bats being summoned here. There we go. The poison just takes it down instantly, but every time it's the same push, and if it doesn't change oh. soon, Oh, but the Golems have connected onto the Tower okay. of Detonation Gaming. Second explosion does happen for the smaller Golems here. And how far can the P.E.K.K.A. make it? Is There's a the Rage point. Potion. That's going oh, no, 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 to this to attack the Tower. It's going to do so much damage. Bad. Does stop it just in time. The Royal Ghost saves the day by stopping the Prince's charge there. But what cost if that Royal... Oh, I thought that Royal Ghost was going to get there just in time, but the Dark Prince was played... Perfect okay. timing. 601 HP left. The poison's gonna be knocking it down slowly by slowly. One more minute to hold on. Prince is gonna be there, knocking off a little bit at a time. Coming from this golem here, the Royal Ghost trying to finish off the Prince before it does significant amount of damage. It does uh, so. The, golem the, here. the Pecker in the back just yes. takes out that golem. There's the okay. tornado, but the okay. tornado kind of pulled everything. There, one more hit. There Ooh. you go. Coming in from Fob Gaming to show that 1v1 is not the only game mode they can play. 2v2, it's in their books as well. Yeah, that tornado there, I was a bit apprehensive of because I couldn't quite tell whose it was. I wasn't looking at the color. But it just pulled everything back for a fraction of a second so that that golem could get that final hit on that tower. And you saw the continuous, continuous chip down of uh, the enemy turret, we just talk about the fireball, the poison, anything you can do to chip it down one at a time. You do have a lot of time in these competitive format timers when you have a lot of time to just go for the overtime just to get that one tower. It's knocking it out, slowing it up a bit. So it wasn't really the goal that finished now at the end, but it was a lot of the chip damage. They defending out the goal and was the important part that got five gaming another win here. They also did the same push over and over and over and over and over again. They never stopped with the Golem, Night Witch. Even though they knew poison was going to yep. come down, if it's in the middle, it's not on your tower. It's not dealing that chip damage. So I guess that's what they were thinking at that point, right? If we make sure that our Night Witch is getting poisoned, our tower isn't taking damage. Yep. And we've just been informed that one of the teams has taken a timeout, so we have another minute until the next game. So it, it has to be Fob Gaming because Detonation Gaming already used their timeout uh, in set one, so it's now being in set two, still in the same series between these two teams. Fob Gaming, you don't want to use your timeout. So after getting a win, interestingly, they feel like they need extra time to talk over uh, what could be a clincher in this series if they just win out the next one here? I think that's the point. I think they want to take this just so they can take it, yeah. but also to just make sure that, guys, this is game number two. You win this, we win the match. Do it. Like, we're going to make sure that your decks are perfect. We're going to make sure that your mental state is perfect as well. Like, maybe they feel like, oh, I'm... That game was so easy, like we won that. Sure. They get a bit cocky. Complacent. Yeah, and they lose focus. Maybe the coach now is like, okay guys, come on. Calm down, breathe, we can do this. And for the time being, it seems like a dominant performance on just one side of the map. We saw Game with putting out really big numbers from 1v1 and 2v2 very cleanly uh, against, you know, we saw that against Pona Sports, but now we're seeing it again with Mob Gaming looking really, just much like a stronger opposition when compared to Detonation Gaming, who have shown a little bit of struggles when it comes to both modes of 1v1 and 2v2. Yeah, I mean, they didn't play terribly. Like, Detonation Gaming, one push in their favor, and they would have taken that tower. Yeah. Like, it was so back and forth. Both teams had a very similar strategy. I think if they were putting their poisons on the tower instead of trying to take out those bats, they would have done more damage, but I think the Night Witch would have finish the towers. But I think the Night Witch really just go to show that keep being resilient on the strategy that you have prepared. One of the push will make it. Also kind of the strategy coming through and we see the draw coming to the favor of both sides as they do get the golem first draw here. Yeah, both see both teams seem to be playing the same deck. We have Fav in blue at the bottom and we have Detonation Gaming in red at the top. So the red golem is the blue the red and blue golem there. Just kind of like swapping over. Oh, look at this. The oh. tornado coming from both sides with the fireball to finish out. Three but musketeers. Does not wipe out the prince, though. Yeah, it just wasn't enough there. Like, they still managed to get to the tower, but they did one hit. Whereas their defense, 
five game in his defense. They took a little bit of extra damage. And there we go. Damage coming in. Really even trade so far from the very first summon into the current uh, tower damage count here. Both these teams seem to hate flying machines because whenever there's a flying machine, <laughs> a fireball comes out and just finishes it instantly. Oh, we see a little bit different here. Elixir Collector being planted on the right side. We see that being startled here as they put the poison, trying to slow down. The, all the extra Elixir can be gained here. Yeah, Detonation Gaming should have known that poison was in the deck because it seems like they're playing the same strategy as game number one, Fab. So they should have known that poison was ready to come out. So it's gonna get a little bit more collection before it does go out. And Prince is gonna be pushing the golems on both sides here. There's Night the Night Witch. Witch, so they are playing exactly the same strategy. Does Detonation Gaming have the poison this time though? Oh, we haven't seen it yet. Oh, the three musketeers. Oh, Musketeer and a beautiful fire. fireball. Oh, that is a brilliant play. You're saving so much elixir. Getting rid of that ultimate nine elixir summon there. Oh, that's gonna be a huge summon now. A huge push. Can they get a little more of this? It's going to be interesting here. Not quite. I think the Night Witch does go down to the poison. We get yeah. a bit of, little bit of stutter here, but the Night Witch goes down to the poison. All the bats are gone. Oh. But yeah, this go. push now is still pretty powerful. I expect the Zap to finish this off, but that, that Dragon's at full health. Maybe not in the rotation still. That's what we can be expecting out of this one, but the rather cleanly clean uh, when it comes to push that's been coming through. Night Witch coming on the other end. It's going to be hit with the poison. It's really not a big problem there. Just going to put the log back just to make sure they receive more poison damage there on that occasion. But the bats are still being summoned, so not completely taken care of. Poison will be coming from the other end to deal with there. Night Witch here. Yeah, Detonation Gaming this time seem to have learned from that last game. They're making sure that their poisons are kind of aggressive, making sure it's hitting the tower. Last time, it was always on the bridge. Right now, both teams are putting that poison in front of the tower, making sure that it ticks a little bit of damage every time, allowing just the golem to chip a little bit more away. So we're going back into overtime. If it's anything like the last game, this is going to go on for another two minutes. At Could least. see that, and the log pushing the three units back and forth. The golem not being pushed anymore. All the other golem has been successfully brought forth to the midline. Look how quickly this Night Witch oh. deals with that though. And a beautiful fireball again, but the Night Witch dealing with that golem for Fav Gaming, and now there is a huge push here. Okay, on the left side, I wonder what we're gonna be seeing here. The rage coming through. Can he compensate for this? Putting a lot of damage on. The Prince is gonna be answered for it, but does go down to 754 before another charge does not come in. We thought it could have been a dangerous situation with the left of the uh, HP on that occasion. Yeah, if that charge hit the tower, that tower would have been one fireball away from death. Uh, it would have done so much damage, and if there was another attack, it would have been game over. Yeah, but here we go again. Night Witch, Gollum. Poison being chipping away to health once again. It could be five game winning this one if he can get the spell rotation right. As long as he gets the defensive strats correctly. But the tornado comes through once again. Good tornado. The poison, down the poison well. hits the tower. There's a fireball to take out the hey. Inferno Dragon. So this is dangerous, but yeah. the push on the other side is going to be so, so oh, strong at this point. Oh, the rage will be coming through. Can he get one more hit? That might be a go sign to make sure. That's it. Okay. Surely. Oh, and Good that will be the game. clearance. And that will be five gaming. A very good timeout taken. It's going to be a huge momentum boost for this team now because so much is on the line to call themselves Japan's perhaps the best team here that we've seen so far. You know what I'm super excited for? What? The next game. Oh, we're Bad in it. gaming versus game with both winners from today. In dominating fashion, you have in to dominating that. fashion. This is gonna be, it's 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 a Goliath versus a Goliath. Like it's not a David versus Goliath. This is the big show. I just can't wait for it because you know if it was about a person, a team that won out, a team that lost out in another series, then we kind of could expect and predict what the outcome would be. But we have two very strong teams that will be duking it out for this next series here. Yeah, yesterday we had the losers match in Korea. Today we have the winners match. Feels kind good. of what it feels like, right? Yep. But that Rage Potion there, perfect timing. They held it for so, so long. And then used it just to make sure that there was just enough damage on that tower. And it goes down so, so quickly. And we saw just one tap uh, out of any of the units with that Rage spell. Would have been good enough to take the finish in. 
and all that there, but this is a little bit from the last push that we will eventually see, but really good efforts coming in from Fob Gaming altogether. There was so much there from Detonation Gaming. That is a very scary barrel of a gun to look down, yeah. but they just kept their cool bats, Nightwish, even the Lumberjack there. That was a Lumberjack. I didn't even realize. I thought it was a Rage <laughs> Potion. Yeah. But the Lumberjack going to town, making sure that everything just dies. And there, uh, look at that. It died in the perfect place the to make sure that everything got in the right place to finish it off. Look at that. Just that last one push. And that is what you did. Even the Fireball wasn't even here at the end. What a great play coming from Fob Gaming. Really impressive team. Not just the 1v pun, but they showed us again 2v2 is no slouch either. Yeah, I tell you, that Lumberjack kind of walked around the poison. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. It, it just died in the right position. If it died anywhere earlier, I think they wouldn't have got there as quickly. Those backups just went woohoo straight right up to the tower. Right on the bridge, the rage spell just reinforcing everyone to make the charge and get the last tower that was really needed for Fob Gaming. So... Although it seemed like a close match for both games, in the end, a 2-0 to zero finish for these guys, and they go up this next series really as favorites to the team that we should look out for, for against the very strong team we now know as Game With as well. Yeah, but we've got to look at Detonation Gaming. They didn't play terribly, right? They played really, really well. They just didn't have what it takes to win a match, you know? Yeah. They played good games, especially in those 2v2s. It was very, very, very close, but they just couldn't quite keep up with the pressure. And I, was, I thought I'd observed a little bit more in one view when it came to noticeable mistakes and something that we could observe right away that things could be better for this team if you know right adjustments are taken. But against a relatively weaker team in Detonation Gaming, I do have to agree. But still, Fob Gaming showing what is strong. Game with we can't just forget the fact that Game with was a very strong team in themselves as well. Yeah, I mean. Game with versus Fav Gaming next. Wow. I just cannot wait for this game. Like, 1v1, 2v2, it's going to be super exciting. I imagine the ace match will come through as well as we do have another short break before we return for the very last series as we get our first introduction of Japan region in Clash Royale. We'll be right back after this commercial. We'll be coming back to the last series.